Hello and good day, good evening everybody. How are you doing? I am so excited. It's already evening here where I am and I am so excited because I will be talking with Melissa Maris this evening and I love doing the Ultimate Raw Vegan Bundle Lives to share all information. Wonderful, wonderful, important tips and such. And we've had some uh, Instagram delays, but this is cool. She's here. Hi. Hello, Wendy. How are you? I'm. I'm awesome. I'm so happy to to have the bundle going on right now. So it's, oh yeah, it's I can fun. imagine from your point of perspective, you've been working it for so long. Like you've been doing such hard hard work. I appreciate it. Oh, uh, thank you. Yeah, it's been it's been real a lot of work. A lot of work. I mean not just making my raps book or the book that I wrote with chef AJ. Like I might, I made two things for this bundle, um, but also like organizing it behind the scenes. So it's been like, yeah, a lot I, of work. <laughs> I was going through your post for a while already. And every time I was thinking, Oh, that looks really cool. And I love the, the rappers. I was, I, I love the rappers, those white and, and red. That's actually the flag of where I'm from. And I was like, Oh, that's so cool. That's really cool. Yeah. yeah. So um, I'm just drinking a smoothie too. Um, the story behind the rappers is really interesting. So Nate and I, we used to have um, a raw vegan catering company called La Bella Fresca, where we would make salads and sometimes burgers and some other stuff. Right. And we would deliver to anybody right in Oregon, in the Southern Oregon area. So we would make salads and stuff and people would order the night before and then we would make them and we, we would deliver them to them. But not very many people ordered and so we had to close down after about a year because it just wasn't, it didn't make any sense. People said they'd order and then they didn't order and then we would be like, yeah, it was just too much work and it, yeah, anyways. But we bought a, a case of those wrappers for like burgers that we would make for people and we only used like one or two sheets out of that whole box. And this was like okay. four years ago. So we had this box of wrappers for four years sitting in a cupboard. And then when we made these wraps, I was like, oh, we have those wrappers. So I got them out and now we've been using the wrappers regular so it's, it's really fun but that's the story oh yeah that's rapper. that's an amazing story <laughs> otherwise i was thinking yeah why not like the fruit festival my dutch fruit festival right it is in brabant this is the flag of brabant so i was like wow we should do something like that that would be really cool <laughs> okay yeah, that would be really fun. And you can just order them on Amazon. Like, you can get boxes of, like, a thousand wraps of course, but for, like, 20 you know, all these ideas bucks. Yeah. Come up, and you come up with such wonderful ideas. So, amazing. Can I ask you, um, what do you have for breakfast? What was your first meal today? <laughs> <laughs> um, normally, I mean, during the bundle, it's crazy because... I wake up, I curl my hair, um, I get ready, and then I'm live. Like, <laughs> so it's it's a lot of work. Nate just made these smoothies. This is um, date, cacao, vanilla, lots of bananas. Um, yeah, I think that's what he put in this one. But normally, <laughs> on a normal day, <laughs> I wake up and I have whole fruit first thing in the morning. So I'll eat like about three or 400 calories worth of fruit. So it's like two bananas and two mangoes or some berries or nectarines or whatever, like pineapples, stuff like that. So I'll eat that first thing in the morning when we get up. And then we go for our walk where we try to get, it's about an hour and a half walk that we do in the morning. And then when we get back, we make a smoothie. So before lunch, we've had probably around a thousand calories worth of fruit. And then lunch is a big salad 
with a low-fat dressing, and then dinner is either another big salad or a burger or tacos or some kind of fun raw thing. But lately during the bundle, so what we've been doing, and this is game changing for anyone who like works a job or goes to school or has a busy day, the night before you blend my wrap, like you blend the wrap recipe and you pour it in the dehydrator tray and put it in the dehydrator. And the next yeah. day at lunch, you well, have wraps. As with the bundle and we don't have a lot of time, I really want to share you this because I, I took your book. I was like, okay, make something from the bundle. Make something. We're talking with Melissa. Do you think I can make a wrap in during mm -hmm. the day? Yeah, I think it, I think it was about eleven thirty, and then by the time they finished, I think I put them in. It was two. So I want to check out if it's a, if it's if it's if it's good. I would need your approval. No, <laughs> I, I need your approval. Look, no, guys, it's super simple. Ta-da! Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah those are looking one good. One. This one's a little wet, but I made the last ones, two ones, a little drier. Yeah, this one will be, yeah, it will be ready. <laughs> Look at those. Yeah, they normally take yeah, I know. 12 hours. But I also That's have been little, experimenting yeah. for a while with different kind of wraps. And, uh, you know, I, I, I now have some tricks up my sleeve to speed up the process if I need. I just made them thinner. Yeah, yeah, if you make them thinner, they dry faster for sure. But like, if you want it to be like the really nice, good, thick. Ooh, that's so beautiful. That <laughs> all the rainbow, all the rainbow fillings, such great stuff. Um, hey, can you talk a little bit about yes, your contribution? Um, so I, I made this course seven simple steps to unlimited energy uh everybody nowadays needs more energy we're all stressed out we want to you know we want to feel more energized throughout the day a lot of people are fatigued say it's the kids it's this it's that well uh it's the diet well a lot of times the diet really helps i ensure you but as a holistic therapist of course i have i have some other uh tricks up my sleeve right uh so i'm always yeah i'm always helping people with so many other tools and I just try to squeeze in as much uh, living foods as possible uh, you know, at the same time. So, um, and actually the story about the seven simple steps to energy is started um, yeah, a long time ago uh, in, uh, in 2012 and I investigated something and learned more about myself and when I was really ill, like uh, um, when Keon was one so I think 2014 I was really my, my body was just a mess and I, I was in so much pain and I you know I you probably know the story but people might not but I write the story as well in the in the the first PDF that comes with the bundle and um, I listed a list of 14 diagnoses which are sort of chronic and this just it just made me unable to sleep without pain, without waking up, and I could not walk up the stairs like that or, or up a hill and or down. Uh, and, and I got threatened with the wheelchair if I do more. So actually, what I did then is, well, that's what I do with people actually in the seven simple steps. So I took a major decision at that moment that I thought like my life is just over. I thought, this is not living. My life is finished. Like, I'm just a zombie. I can't think anymore. I can't sleep anymore. I can't walk anymore. I can't think anymore. I'm just trying to nurse this baby all the day. Well, it was already quite big at the time. And yeah, all these allergies came back and all this stuff. And I was like, yeah, this is just not living. I'm just half dying over here. And instead of thinking, okay, I give up. I'm going to be a, you know, a little old plant at the age of 30 yeah um i made a big decision and i said i'm going to do whatever it takes to fix this i'm going i believe that there is on this planet a herb a remedy a person that knows how and what to do there must be something that i can do uh the exercises all that oh, i did so many doctors and specialists and therapists and you know it didn't get better and so uh, within a year, I found out that I should really do a detox and then I did it. And then I wanted to live on fruits and vegetables only. And then a little bit later, I found out that it's called 
raw vegan or fruitarianism or all these other beautiful words like living foods and I didn't know that I need to search on that but then I found out and that was exactly one year after you know I did the decision that it has all these names and there's like a community and there are more people doing it and and I just went full on fruit for the first six weeks I had little you know little salads but not really only tender leaves you know not broccoli or cabbages only tender leaves and smoothies juice green green smoothies and um six weeks later I was reborn and i haven't looked back and i learned so many people struggle so many people struggle so i wanted to find out why is my partner he's not struggling but you know he wants to drink his beer and why is it for me so easy to just say, well, if this is more healthy, it gives me more energy and I feel it every day, I'm doing it. So I went through this process where into um, limiting beliefs that you have, but you're not aware of, and that you can do that with like a practical, more psychological exercises, but that you can also do that. And I already knew that because I, you know, I was an energetic therapist. So and to the healing part. So you can also do an energy healing on yourself where you just guide the energy of the universe and feel what needs to change. And then you make an emotional feeling change inside your body. And I thought that's so beautiful to combine these aspects. So in my course, um, I'm gonna dive in with people on their, on their thoughts and their limiting beliefs and find out what is causing them particularly to fail or you know not choose choose for that thing that we really want and also on a holistic spiritual aspect and so the rest of the course is full with wonderful tips about breathing and about sleep and about sunshine about colors um yeah and i got a little bit carried away so now i have seven simple steps and they're all very simple like i can do all of them in maybe 20 minutes everything but if you're new it takes seven hours to explain or a book of like almost 70 80 pages <laughs> so oops it was a little bit too big but um i think it's really valuable and i don't mind because i really enjoyed making it and i know that there are already people uh reading it right now and i'm getting all these emails and feedback and they're like oh my god Wendy, i feel so much better and i feel really good that i helped them with that so that is not in a nutshell Oh, but <laughs> a little bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, I love that you touch on other aspects of health. I did a live yesterday talking about the wheel of health and how it's like it's so important that it's, you don't just focus on diet. Like sleep, sleep does things that diet will never do. Exercise does things that diet will never do. Breath work does things that diet will never do, right? Like we have to do these other things. Diet is very important for sure, but we have to do all kinds of other things as well and to not put so much focus on the diet. Like it's gonna take time obviously to get used to like the new habits because really when it boils down to it, yep. eating healthy is just a habit. And, and the only way to get into the habit is to practice the habit. And I was talking to Sky yesterday and we were talking about how a habit is like, like we don't say anything about like, it's not a yoga yeah. perfect, yeah. right? It's yeah. a yoga practice because you're practicing yoga every day and there's no end goal of like, you are now officially exactly. like done yoga, right? Like you never get done yoga so it's like a, a a a healing lifestyle practice where every day you practice the sleep you practice the exercise you practice the diet you practice yeah. the breath work and you just practice so that, every day there's no end goal. The, mm -hmm. those tools are in this uh in this uh in this course and i you know i i i I do that on the video, a simple breathing, a simple movement. And I call everything simple because they are like, if, they're like a minute long to do. Okay, I tell you to go work out for 30 minutes. That's not one minute. But I think that everybody knows that they should exercise. But then you can use one, step one to four 
to figure out like how much do you want to exercise and how much do you want the result and how can you incorporate it in your in your daily life uh, in an easy way how can you make your brain work for you and your spirit how can you connect with your soul spirit and how can you combine your brain and your soul spirit into getting what you want and that's i think that's the healthy beautiful body i think that everybody's here because they are enjoying recipes because that's of course so my goal as well <laughs> like i want to enjoy the ride you know like i want to enjoy life i want to enjoy the recipes i don't want to feel restricted that i have to eat raw vegan or something you know like i have to be a vegan no i want i just i just want to do that you know like and it feels good now and it's all about now it's not about you know Oh, I must do this or I can never have and well to change that it takes some practice and you can practice it with me and my course and I think that that way uh, you yeah, know you can enjoy the recipes even more because then you just want to do it every day <laughs> exactly I know I love that you said that too because it is it is totally it starts up here we have to want to eat this way. We have to want to exercise. We have to want to be, be vegan. Like we have to want these things. And we don't have to do it, but we do it because we want to. And changing the way that you say things, like instead of saying like, I can't have pizza, instead say, I want yeah. to eat a salad. Like it's, you don't even so have to funny. think about the pizza. Oh, that's so, <laughs> Focus that's on so what you funny. want. Like that is so applicable. I just had that talk here on the couch before before we went live. Just like it, I ended that talk five minutes before we went live, <laughs> and I said, "It's not, it's so restrictive." I said, "It's not. A, you know, can't have pizza. Well, you can, but you you just choose now to eat with us the wraps and the salad. <laughs> but if you want to go eat pizza outside, you could go eat pizza outside. Yeah, but I feel guilty. You should do my course." <laughs> This is my boyfriend that I'm talking about. I know, yeah, the guilt guilt has, has no place no. In, in healthy decisions. Because if you choose, if you did choose the pizza or the potato chips or whatever yeah. it whatever it is, instead of feeling guilty, learn from your choice. Take it as an opportunity to learn why you chose the pizza, why you ate the potato chips, why you had the donut. Like, ask yourself why. People, all they do is they'll eat the donut and they'll be like, I feel bad that I ate the donut. But they don't dive into the reasons why they chose that. Did you go too long without eating? Are you skipping meals? Are you under eating? Are you not focusing on having more fruit or more vegetables? Like, why is the reason that you chose that food? And then when you learn that, your choice or what most people would think is a mistake becomes a beautiful way and to then grow you can make a different and to be different better. choice and you can add a whole bunch of whys to the list of why you want to choose that salad and then you can yeah no then you can train yourself a whole bunch of whys you know yeah yeah and the more often you choose something the easier it gets so every time you, you have a choice between a pizza and a salad, and every time you choose a salad, it gets easier and easier and easier and easier. It's like any habit that we build, it just gets easier the more we try. Like learning a new language, for example. People, like, when they, when they start learning a new language, they don't expect to learn the entire language overnight, right? You have to do it one day at a time, just like with raw food, just like with exercise. You have to practice it if you don't practice it you don't get good at it <laughs> and also for, i i tip also on some things like um um like your microbiome that it needs time to change and that you got all these critters inside of you sending signals for you to eat the old food and so i take on those as well so that people are a little bit more aware of what's going on in their bodies and and why and so that they can you know they can make that list of of old whys and go away and make a new why to why they want to they want to succeed so i love that you share all that because like for you probably it's the same for me you go through this process and you did it automatically and you're like okay now i make cookbooks on raw food and um and then for a whole bunch of other people it's not like that so that is what this is about and and you know i think that if you want to be like melissa and it's all automatically like she just will explain <laughs> you can do, you can read about it and you can listen and you can 
watch the video and I, that's also cool. I try to incorporate all the senses, even the sixth sense. So, well, I didn't try, I just do that because I, I believe as a teacher, that's the way we learn the fastest. And uh, uh, yeah, I think that's really good. I want to know from you, what is your favorite practice to feel more energized? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I would say out of all the practices to feel more energized, um, I'm going to say two because they, they tie together. Number one, getting proper sleep. That's like by far the most important thing for me to feel energized is to get proper sleep. And number two is to eat fruit first thing in the morning. Those for me are like... I have the best days when I sleep right and then I eat fruit right when I wake up. I'm like, yay! Yeah, totally. You're ready to go. Once you eat fruit, you're ready to go. Yeah, and uh, yeah. Oh, oh, I wanted to ask you as well. Let's say, um, how long does it take for people to, to change their microbiome? What's your experience with that? Ooh, that's a really, really good question. So there's two answers. There's two answers to this. Your microbiome starts to change with one bite, but it can take years to shift your microbiome. It can take months to years. So I'll use myself as an example. When I first went raw nine years ago, they didn't have gut microbiome tests. So I have no idea what my microbiome test score was back then. But I'm going to say like on a scale of one to like they do the test on a scale of one to 100, like percentile based. Um, so like 100 being like the best gut ever and zero being like you have no gut. So <laughs> I don't think anyone has zero, but I know a lot of people who have digestive issues and candida overgrowth and severe gas bloating, constipation, IBS, all colitis, all that kind of stuff. List? They're in the I checked all the boxes. Yeah. Yeah. Same here. Yeah. Yeah. So people with issues and challenges like that, their gut score tends to be around 30 to 50%. That's their, their gut, their overall gut score. The average North American's gut score is about 62%. And the average person who's eating more fiber, who's really healthy is between 70 and 80%. So that's like the, the range that um, I've observed and studied um, in the gut microbiome health. So that, that's just the background legwork. Leg so when I first started raw, I did not have a gut microbiome test, but I had candida overgrowth, severe gut dysbiosis and, and gas and bloating and pain and constipation and diarrhea, like IBS symptoms, all of that. Plus I was not breastfed as a baby. So I'm missing a lot of the bacteria that I was supposed to get from my mom and bless her heart. She didn't know back then, but I was born without those bacteria. I also have a family history of gut disease. My mom had colon cancer and my uncle died with Crohn's. So there is gut disease running in my family. So when I started raw, I'm assuming that my microbiome score would have been around 40%, very low. But I started slow, right? I, I was eating like a variety of foods and I just ate whatever I felt good eating and I tried to get as much variety back then. So over the years, I slowly built my microbiome. My candida fully went away after 15 years of struggling with it. And I did, I did fasts and cleanses and kits and I tried to starve the yeast out and I took pills and I took... You know, I did all the stuff back then because I worked in a natural health food store and I, I had access to I understand candida you. kits and diet. I mean, and I mean I'm an energetic therapist. Yeah. I can get whatever I want, but it wasn't helping me enough. I still ended up down those stairs with all that crap going on in my life. Yeah, until the diet changed. Exactly. I know because it's, it's the foundation. It's the foundation of what you're doing every day. So I... So I took my very first microbiome test after seven and a half years raw. Oh. So that was my very first test. So, so I, I don't know natural. where I started, seven but I took, um, yeah, after seven and a half years, I took a microbiome test and my score was 
So after I took that test, I added even more variety to my diet. I added raw sunchokes and we eat lots of asparagus and fennel and bitter greens. I eat so much radicchio now and dandelion greens and a lot of bitter and a lot more greens raw. And my score went from 83% to 93% in one year. But that's after nine yeah. years of being raw. So even after nine years, I'm still so improving my microbiome. 93. And now it's 93, 93 right now. Uh, that was in January. So I'm due for another test in June, July. So I'm gonna take another test in June or July and see if it's changed or whatever. Um, but my, my diversity score is where it shines because uh, on the biome site, like when I upload my data to uh, this, like it's a website, it's called biome.com. Yes, that's where you can get the test. Com. I'll type it. Yes, you can get the, bi uh, the testing here, biome site. Oop, it's .com. Sorry, oh, it's my okay. phone biome picked site com, com, but it's .com. Okay, dot com. <laughs> yeah, dot .com. Yeah. with an M. <laughs> um, but you upload your data to that site and that site gave me a diversity score of wow. 99%. That's amazing. That's the highest diversity score of anyone that I've ever seen. And I know quite a few raw vegans who've done microbiome testing and Nate and I, we both, Nate has 91% and I have 93%. But most of the long-term raw vegans that I know who have tested are in the 70s. And they've been raw like twice as long as I have. So there's, they, but they also do a lot of juicing. Um, they don't eat as many varieties. I mean, some do, but um, it's mostly like they're doing a lot of juicing. And I think when you're juicing, you are eliminating so much of the insoluble fiber that I think plays a big role in feeding the microbiome. So. I'm not anti-juice. I'll drink a juice every once in a while, but I don't think that it should be a major right. part of someone's diet because there's like no fiber, yeah. hardly any fiber left in it. There is soluble fiber, but I think the people who eat the whole food the way nature made it, um, I mean, blended in a smoothie, you're still getting all the fiber. It's when you extract the fiber that's causing a lot more issues. But so some of these long-term raw people are doing a little too much juice in my opinion i mean this is this is my observation <laughs> Thank you for the judgment. Um, but i, I think they old. should be eating more no no i, no, I I'm just, yeah i'm just sharing like my like what i've seen over the years with building the microbiome is i see and the is, value in the whole i agree food, with you totally right? Exactly but I did a lot it. of juicing, mm -hmm. but it, I, I, people ask this question to me as well, mm -hmm. because I did a lot of juicing and also very long ones, but I, I always explain to them, it's where you're standing and what you need to, to do. If I had not done that, I didn't know mm -hmm. I had, um, what's in English, take worm inside me. I would not have known because no doctor oh, tested yeah. on that. They were all thinking about liver and ligaments and it's chronic and I don't know. Do you want to, do you want painkillers? Uh, you know, no, I don't want painkillers. <laughs> uh, but sometimes it is. And then I think now, I don't know how it is where you are, but now I have like private uh, health insurance in here in, in Spain. I can go to the clinic and I can ask for something. But in the Netherlands, they just say no. But I want this test. No. Well, yeah. You know what's really sad? I've heard some pretty um, sad things about the, the medical system in the Netherlands. I have another friend who lives in the Netherlands, and she has a very serious illness that's ex extremely rare, and she can't get help. She has to go outside of the Netherlands to get help, and she has to pay for everything out of pocket. And it's like hundreds of thousands of dollars, and it's really sad okay. because they can't afford it. And well, she's okay. deteriorating well, she, she because of it. She can get my yeah. number. You can refer her, okay? I'll help her because I know how to get... If you're a European uh, passport, it's super easy. I can help you how to how to, um, how to, to do. We have to do how to do. Yeah. Send her over. Yeah. Send her over the, uh, yeah. because it's, it's yeah, possible. Okay. And, uh, but people don't know, you know, you're supposed to follow this routine in the, in the Netherlands for the normal doctor and then... They say no, but nowadays it has changed. I mean, it has also been seven and a half years for me. Uh, like I'm seven and a half years brown right now. So I time for my microbiome test, right? Um, 
But things have changed. <laughs> I've been able to do like a, a gene test now where they also test um, what kind of enzymes you make and or less or more or, you know, like it tests lactose and HFR and, and stuff like that. And uh, because I figured some things out by myself, why I'm not digesting everything properly. And I was like, okay, well, I really think this is going on in my body, but there's nobody wants to test it because it's so specific and in detail. And I found this um, company, 150 euro. I get an app, I get such a long test. I got the raw data and I, like you, I put it in a website and it explains everything to me. And I'm like, yeah, I'm right. Okay, well, I have to watch this, this and this and I'll be fine. And that is such a relief. That's such a relief. So I understand sometimes for others that this data of your microbiome or some other data about your body can be so valuable, you know? So yeah, I, I think so we should do that. So can you share also where people can get this test that you're talking about? Yeah, so it depends on where you live. Um, in the United States, I'm gonna post it in the chat. In the United States, this is the one that Nate and I use ombrelab.com so this is this is the one that Nate and I use in the United States if you live in Canada it's a little expensive shipping because you're shipping you're shipping live sample of your poo to the United States so they need to have expedited shipping I think it's a hundred dollars for shipping and then it's a couple of dollars for the test but this place viome.com this place um, they do Canada and then in the UK and in Europe, it's biomesite.com. So this website, biomesite.com, that does the UK. And if you're in the <laughs> Australia, <good> that. <laughs> it's my, I, I'm obsessed with the microbiome. I seriously, I have like, I think it's the most amazing discovery for the human body in that we've had in a long time. I think it's, it's so important like yeah genetics are very very important for sure but the genetics 99.5 percent of our genetics yeah. are our microbiome we are only 0.5 yeah. percent and, human and this, you know that these microbiome bacteria and stuff they group neuro neurons um uh, neurotransmitters yeah they, that's neurotransmitters. neurotransmitters yeah Hormones, they're the same thing, except they're just in a different place in your body. Yeah. And then they, they, they like, so people mm -hmm. who are depressed, change your diet, you know, they mm -hmm. change your body, diet, then you get bacteria that poop happy hormones. <laughs> yeah, I know. Isn't that funny? It's like 90% of our serotonin, our happy hormone is made in our gut but we have to feed them so yeah. that they make this it. This is so valuable, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I thank you for sharing that because I was thinking before, oh, I want to ask her about that. I think it would be so valuable for everybody that I know because I will, I'm not able to give these answers that you are able to give, you know? And that, that's why it's so, yeah, wonderful to do these interviews with the bundle uh, yeah. going on and stuff. Yeah. I know. I I love these interviews. They're so much fun. My mom, the gentle homeopath is in the chat, is asking about blood type. The blood type doesn't matter with the microbiome. What matters for the microbiome health is the types of variety of fiber that you eat. So the more variety that you can eat worth of plant fibers, the stronger your gut microbiome will become. And the more consistent you are with adding more variety, the stronger your microbiome becomes over months to years. Now, the thing is, animal products, oils, those two things have zero fiber. They do not feed your microbiome. They feed other bacteria. Um, so animal products and oils do not have any fiber in them whatsoever. And then processed foods have very, 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 very low fiber, which don't feed your microbiome either. So the only things that actually feed your microbiome are fiber. And foods that are really high in inulin are some of the best gut microbiome foods like jicama, sunchokes, asparagus, um, garlic and onions are actually incredibly they beneficial are? for the gut microbiome. How about that and sulfur? They, they are. I know it's, it's so smelly. Because it's, it's feeding your gut. That's what gut, like the gas, 
So it's, if, you, if you're getting smelly stuff, it's because you ate too much of it for your gut. So you have to work up slowly. So start with just half a clove of garlic, but do that for like a week or two or three or a month, and then increase to one clove. And then do that for a week or two or a month or whatever, and then increase it slowly with that. Because if you are experiencing any symptoms, it's just, it's not a sign that the food is bad. It's just a sign that you're overeating that fiber and your gut isn't strong enough to deal with it. It's like going to the gym, for example, right? If you go to the gym and you start lifting 80 pound weights, which would be like four <laughs> cloves of garlic, it's going to be a lot and you might hurt your muscles because it's too much for your muscles. But if you start small with the five pound weights, right, then you can slowly build the muscle. It's just like building the gut. You have to go slow. And garlic and onions are actually some of the top microbiome foods because they're so high in inulin and they kill off the bad bacteria while they feed the good bacteria. So there's like a lot of new science coming out about the importance of garlic and onions. So I use a lot of those and my score is like super high. So I eat a, like a I know, crazy I amount. That. I saw that. <laughs> that's and that's happen. so inspirational. Like I have not been able to eat uh, legumes or cruciferous vegetables as long as I can remember. Like when I was 10, as long as I can remember. And I know that for me, it's going better. But for example, what I did was I ate sweet onions and they are the fresh, sweet, white ones. And they're not so strong, but I can eat them every day and I don't have any problem. And if I do that for a while, hey, I can eat the red one. But if I go juicy for two weeks and I'm going to eat the red onion, yeah, there's going to be a problem. So don't do that. <laughs> and that's and that is what you know people yeah. don't know like we're not educated not through our family and not through school and not through our friends so yeah that's why we are here now you and me and, and the rest of the fund of people to 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 talk about that uh, here's also another question um have you heard of diets that healed the gut with meat broths and other whole foods i did that i i did the broth thing too i actually did the yes. weston a price thing where I was eating raw animal products, raw dairy, um, and I was eating the whole foods and the ferments and stuff, and my, that didn't and fix it my didn't problems. <laughs> no, the, the, a lot of people, okay, so this is my, these are my thoughts on the whole adding animal products back, because when you're eating fiber, you're challenging your gut to grow. When you take the fiber away, you're not challenging your gut. So it feels good right? Because you're not challenging it, but challenging it is how the growth happens. It's like, it's like when you take away the fiber, it's like laying on the couch and watching TV. It feels good in the moment, but you're not challenging your body to grow, right? So we challenge our hearts by going out for a walk or a hike, right? We challenge our heart and it gets better that way. It's uncomfortable, right? <laughs> to, to exercise. Yeah, but for some people, it's like, it's uncomfortable. Well, yeah, you have to get up and you have to move, right? Um, yeah, but, and then we challenge our lungs with breath work. And that can be very uncomfortable in the beginning. We challenge our minds with meditation. And that can be very challenging in the beginning. We challenge our body in so many ways. But then when it comes to our gut, we're like, no, no, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. no challenging challenge, there. But, we just want to live but, well but the same not to the build it up build it up build it up and yeah build it up and if somebody yeah. uh, like me i was not digesting anything and you should have seen the amounts of food that i ate and also vegetables and i was just losing and losing and getting more skinny and if you have a tapeworm eating all your food you have that but it, nobody knows that you have it so i also say to people you know maybe for you it's something else you could have an underlying thing but get the thing checked out like, and you don't have to take the medication, but get it checked out. Just go there and, and get your, figure out what it is so that we can do something about it. Yeah. Thank you for saying that. That's a, a really important thing that I think a lot of people are really scared to get tested because they don't trust doctors. And it's like, well, a doctor can tell you what might be wrong, but you don't have to always follow what they say to treat it. You can do your own research and you can get second opinions from, 
functional medicine doctors or practitioners or other people, right? But get the diagnosis Don't so you know what you're and dealing while with, you do right? That, you create, like, you, you gain all this other growth, you know? You learn, you learn how to stand up for yourself. You learn how to speak up for yourself, literally talking, you know, some perseverance. And you got, you know, if, so guys, if you're like that, you can, you know, I, I encourage you to try it anyway and go do it so that you grow emotionally as well and know about your body. Because what I learned holistically is that um, those worms and bad parasites and stuff that live in raw meat, for example, they they stay also with the body because they have like the vibration of unworthiness they have the vibration of i don't i'm not good enough and so uh, when you change the vibration of who you are by your thoughts and emotions and your just your being they can't stay there anymore because they they're there to love you they say oh i vibrate with that but i love you i stay with you you're not alone see you can <laughs> eat all this junk food i love you right and they say Sending all these hormones to your brain, telling you, I yeah. love you, <laughs> give me more food, give me more bad food. Yeah, and then we, use, yeah, we, a lot of people use the self-love excuse to eat junk food. They're like, well, I love myself, so I should be able to eat whatever I want. And it's like, well, if you really love yourself, then you would put loving foods into your body, right? Because like, we want to respect our body. We want to have fun with with food right but that's why it's like it's nice to have the bundle because you can still have fun with food you're just eating really good high quality stuff right so you get the best of both worlds like nate and i love our wraps we're gonna have wraps for yeah. lunch and they're so good and they're totally. healthy i mean for me i mean i love making star restaurant foods i just i'm i'm grow up with a dad who does that i've got a grandpa who's a chef um everything from scratch. That's how I grew up. When I was 15, I was making dinners and not from packagings. Mm -hmm. So I could go somewhere and make like a very traditional French uh, cuisine. I could just do that for me. And then when, when I went on raw, I was like, now I can make new recipes. Like now I don't have to like take something specific from a famous person that is, uh, you know, like a French person for a hundred years ago, but I can, I can try to make that same flavor, but then, and the same texture, but then raw. And that is, well, it's a gift. It's a gift. It's such a pleasure to be able, and also you book with the wraps. It's such a pleasure to make, make so many different kind of wraps. Isn't that so cool? And you know, when you're like normal vegan or something, you have two choices in the, in the supermarket. Well, you have three. You have nori, you have the wheat ones, and you have the ones with the rice. You have three options. And you have your book, it's full of options. Like, way more than three. I don't know how many. 21? 33! Okay, I stopped around 20. I thought, oh, it's more than 30. <laughs> yeah, and the cool thing with my wraps is they're very gut-friendly. So there's um, psyllium, which is extremely gut friendly. Psyllium husks actually feed our microbiome. I do like there's a brand new study that I was reading um, where they talk about psyllium husk actually feeding our gut microbiome specific kinds of bacteria yeah. that we need to heal. And it's also mucilaginous. So it's really soft and healing for the microbiome or for the gut lining. There's chia seeds or flax seeds, but they're so small amount, like they're very low fat. There's one tablespoon of chia or flax per wrap. So it's very small, but you're getting your omega-3s. So it's gut friendly, you're getting your omega-3s and you're getting variety. So you're getting a lot of vegetables, you're getting fruit, you're getting great stuff inside the actual wrapper. Exactly. It's not just wheat it's, and oil. And it's so tasty. Right? It's, and you know, I've been making my own wrap for, for also for about seven years now and nothing that, that I make looks like what's in your book so for me everything is completely 100% new ideas I'm like wow <laughs> oh, I'm so glad and that's the really cool thing even just us creators who've created all these new pieces of content for the bundle, which you can get, <laughs> people, get the bundle. The link is in either of our bios. Go grab it because this is the only time in 2023 
that you're going to be able to get all of our new content for $50. Like we're going to sell all yeah. this stuff after the bundle. We'll sell them on our websites individually. But if you were to buy everything individually from all 40 of us, it would cost you over $1,800, but we're giving it all to you for 50 bucks. Yes. But so it's only until May 11th. And so just set yourself up for success. Like set your, and then go back next year because we're not standing still here. Huh? <laughs> Yeah, next year will be all new. My mom is saying this. My mom said something very interesting in the chat. She said, that's an excellent point about psyllium. Since making your wraps with it, yeah. my gut feels better. I saw, that, I saw another yeah. question, but I, I kind of missed it. It was about the microbiome. If they die, if they, you know, during the winter and then in summer comes back. Yeah, so our gut microbiome shifts with the seasons for sure but it's about strengthening the microbiome that you do have. So when you're in those shifts of seasons, it still stays strong because during different seasons, you're still feeding your gut. You're just feeding it in a different way. So always shift with the seasons and enjoy the abundance of what's in season, but also enjoy an abundance of everything else that you can still get year round, like your greens and your other vegetables and your other fruits. But when you do have seasonal fruits, add those in yeah. too, yeah. on top of everything else. And you can like be enjoy lucky the sun chokes are a winter thing. They're in winter. And then you can have your inulin for your microbiome in winter. And then, you know, you can have um, chicory. You can have chicory in summer. And you still have inulin helping your microbiome. So you, so you, the season change, but you're still, supporting your gut how do you think melissa got to this 93 percent you know <laughs> she's doing something right yeah you're doing something exactly right. and another thing too another thing on the sun choke thing um nate and i we go to la and in la they have these really massive big giant like uh wholesale produce markets because it's where it's where like you know most of the western coast gets a lot of their vegetables from so when we go there with John Kohler, at the end of sunchoke season, we buy 30 pounds of sunchokes. And then we spend like a couple hours washing the sunchokes and chopping them up. And then we marinate them with lemon juice, garlic, and herbs. And we freeze them on trays. So we have sunchokes during the summer because we could just take a handful and thaw it in the dehydrator and add it to our salads. So we get that inulin throughout the summer. But that's just but, something we do, no, we're geeks and we I, like to My first <laughs> recipe book, my first program that I made in 2017, I was just uh, two years on, a, on this, yeah, two years on this, on this lifestyle. I incorporated sun chokes because I already knew about the inulin. I knew about the gut. I knew I, that's what I graduated on the part of the, the, this part of the gut. And you know what, in your, if you're in, in Netherlands, if you're in, you have a farm somewhere and you're up north in the United States or in Canada, you put two in the ground, they never leave your garden. Never, ever, ever, <laughs> ever. They're, they're really, you have to contain them because otherwise you have only sun jokes in your garden. <laughs> but so everybody, guys, you have this you have a garden, you want to have sun jokes, <laughs> grow them. They don't, they don't want to leave. My dad is like, Wendy, yeah. why did you tell me to grow them? He said, please food. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I know I would love to grow sun chokes. I mean, we live in a high rise in Las Vegas, but eventually when we do have our own land, um, we will grow. We will have a, a special area <laughs> only for sun chokes. So that we can Perfect. Grow. Oh, if you have some trees around, <laughs> they won't go to the next uh, patch. So yeah, and currently I am not having a garden yeah. either because I chose to live at the beach in the Mediterranean beach and there's just a lot of apartments at the beach and there's not a lot of, if you want to land, you know, you, you have to have some more money or something and buy a gigantic villa. I want the land, but I don't need the villa. Give me a tiny house. <laughs> there was another question yeah. about psyllium. I don't know if you have time, but I could answer that question because different kind of psyllium. So I looked into that. Did, did you look into that? Yeah. Yeah. So um, okay. I did answer in the chat. I said, um, psyllium, I use psyllium husk powder 
the powder is a lot better. It, like it, it works better in recipes than the actual husk. So I, I have actually looked at different companies. Now Foods has one of the best psyllium husk powders because now Foods, they actually test for lead. Some companies for psyllium have higher lead content. So you want to make sure that the lead is lo like low to no in the psyllium. And now Foods has the best um, yep. psyllium that I've noticed. So now Foods, I think, can, is, is almost yeah, available worldwide. I don't know for sure. As well. but, yeah, um, here okay. too, they have it here too. Yeah. But there, I think, I, I don't know about Spain. But you can get anything here. Like you, <clears throat> they spray mm -hmm. Roundup on my doorstep. So yeah uh and then, oh in the playground too and then it says a sign don't touch the plants yeah maybe we, yeah maybe we don't right okay but uh in netherlands it's very strict like they're so regulated they're oh dutch is over regulation so that's lucky they also mm. over regulate food like that so uh you yeah. would do that yeah no no but now yeah. food has a lot of good products and actually i use the psyllium husk but there are different kinds of plants indeed and different kind of varieties. And where I'm from this area and, and the history about it, it was a very, very natural plant to exist there. So that, that gives all these varieties and it, and some, you know, some brands are different than other brands that, that sell them. And also in psyllium husk, I've seen people buy psyllium husk from a certain, you know, a certain uh, manufacturer. And I was like, yeah, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't use that just by looking at it. So it's just where it's yeah. standing, and mm -hmm. it's and it's flax, it's lean, it's it's the same thing. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just the husk. It's just the outside, and yeah, and it's yeah. an amazing and source of really fiber. Massage. Seriously, really food for the guys. Fine. And then they get all strong yeah. and beautiful, and yeah. the poop come out, Lisa. <laughs> 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 That's what we all want. We yeah, all want we do, good poops. <laughs> Oh, oh, there's a child standing in front of me. He's doing this. Wait to get dehydrated. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't wait for you guys to try it. Yeah, oh. I think we're going to try it. We're going to try it. <laughs> I'm getting quite hungry about talking all this awesome. lovely food at dinner time. <laughs> Yes, dinner time. Awesome. I've got a live in 10 minutes. Good. So. I expected <laughs> us to maximum go a few minutes before eight. So I want to thank you very much, Melissa, for sharing all that wonderful information and, uh, oh, and bringing in your mom in the bundle. She's awesome. Okay. I know. Love my mama, you guys. Got to get the bundle because you get Wendy's course, you get my wrap book, you get my mom's. Uh, my Gentle Kitchen ebook, you're getting 40 ebooks and courses for 50 bucks, valued at over $1,800. So click the link in either of our bios, go get the bundle, yeah. and enjoy. Let me see you later. Right? <laughs> okay. okay. Bye bye. Yeah. Much love. All right. Bye.